big press conference. Usually a few days before the draft, John will speak. This year they had to bring out Kyle too because they might have a disagreement of opinion. They may be working through some things. Anyway, they came, they both came out and they both said their piece together in a way that made it seem like they're on the same page. Vish watched it. You watched it. Vish, what's your takeaway from this? Yeah, the biggest takeaway has to be what I thought was a Freudian slip from Kyle Shanahan two minutes into the press conference. And then he happened to say it like six different times after. And that's that they traded up because they need a starting quarterback. And if they need a starting quarterback, I think that tells you about the current quarterback they have and how they feel about him. Because that was and, a different message like a month ago. Yeah, right. When I was in Tahoe in the Stinger, they were like, hey, we, got, we love Jimmy. It's not about that. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Now they basically told you how they felt. And yeah. the funny thing to me is that um, if you remember actually yesterday, one of our conversations, because you came on my show, Shameless Plug, Wake and Fish Sports, subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe. But um, you came on my show. And one of the things we talked about at the very end was this idea of them trading up this much to go get what's maybe the third best quarterback. To me, right. it, it tells you all about their feeling of Jimmy Garoppolo. They were so convinced they didn't want to go into another season with Jimmy Garoppolo. And Kyle Shanahan outlined it a little bit that injuries was the main reason today in the presser. But he straight up told you they're looking for their starting quarterback. They needed a starting quarterback. And he made whatever move he felt was the most prudent to go get one. And also, it's it was it, it felt like they've been really trying to protect Jimmy Garoppolo's trade value or feelings or both for a long time. But today, Kyle was like, yeah, there's five guys we feel are basically better than Jimmy in this draft right now. It's like, oh, really? The top five quarterbacks in the entire oh, – wow. He, he said we we have five guys we believe that can be our starting quarterback. He did say that within the presser. That tells you that – Five guys better than Jimmy. Yeah. Right now. That's – ooh, tells you what they and think then, of Jimmy. And the answer about the Jimmy question uh, in terms of – hey, can you tell us if Jimmy will be on the roster next year? I mean, Kyle was a little bit on edge today, which I liked, because I feel like on edge, we got a, we got probably the most, like Kyle's always honest, but he was extra honest because he wasn't trying to ramble and cover up what he was saying. He was to the point and straight. And um, yeah, he basically told you how it is and how he feels about it. I mean, I don't even know if people are going to be alive on Sunday. So no, I can't guarantee anybody being on the roster uh on sunday tells you all like, you need to know yeah yeah because it, it like oh, four weeks ago it almost said like it, they were talking about how he was going to be in training camp and how like angry jimmy's the best jimmy and we want competition and da, 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 da. So now it seems like we want a starting quarterback maybe that maybe they've talked to jimmy and jimmy doesn't feel like he's into that who knows what's going to happen or maybe they're they're talking to teams and they're feeling like they might get a good offer <laughs> in a couple of days you never know you can you could actually see, and I'm not saying there's disconnect between Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch, but yes. there's disconnect in how they answered these questions in this particular presser. John Lynch, every time he talked about the rookie quarterback, whenever he's ready to start, whenever he's ready to start, as if Jimmy is going to start until that guy is ready. Or I talked to Jimmy on Saturday. He's ready to go. He's ready to go through this process with us. He's really excited. And Kyle okay. follows it up with, no, we need a starting quarterback. I believe there's five guys that can be our starting quarterback. So there was right. disconnect. And if the reports were... are true, if we believe them, then Kyle's trying to push Mac Jones because he's ready to start. And Lynch is trying to push Trey Lance. Don't need him to start right away. We got Jimmy Garoppolo. He's healthy now. I'm with you. I, I believe those reports just – just at this point, I, I I think that they were, I think when Dan Patrick first said it, people pushed it under the rug. I think when Colin Coward said it, people pushed it under the rug. I think when Mike Lombardi said it, people pushed it under the rug. Now Todd McShay has said it. Now a bunch of people have come out and kind of said the same thing. It's between Lance and uh, Jones and the, uh, Kyle and the staff wants Jones and the personnel department wants Lance. So it'll be interesting to see who wins out. Uh, Pat Bewley says trade down for Ryan at four, take Pitts at four, find a way to get Mon in the second. Pat, I love you. I love you. I feel Kyle, like if Pat, you're watching, do it. Do it. I Kyle. feel like Pat gives you five bucks every Monday to say this. I've seen this. I've seen this exact thing. It. I'm not sure if it's from Pat, but do it. Do it, Kyle. Like, all I know is that this this right here would be more popular than what you're than what you're fixing to do, Kyle. I, they're they're telling you what they want. But I know you got conviction. Thank you, Pat. I appreciate it. Jeffrey says, this is a good question. Did you guys get the Mac Jones vibe? It seems like when he said, be happy with the same guy at three that we could have got at 
12 screamed Lance and Jones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, honestly, I felt like throughout the presser, Kyle Shanahan was revealing to you that while he doesn't pay attention to social media, while it has nothing to do with his answers, he's well aware of what writers and what media people have been saying about him and Mac Jones. And I think that's why he went out of his way to point out that there's, we're going to talk about it a bit later, that all quarterbacks are different, the right fit, the right guy, all of this. Cause I think he's trying to set you up to say, look, I've put in the research. I've put in the time. I know my offense. Give me the chance to pick my guy. Don't, don't just tell me that I have to pick a guy who can run four, four or a guy with the cannon arm. Let me pick the guy that I think after my time studying this, cause I've studied it hard that he did say that I've studied this hard. Mm -hmm. that I feel is the best. And when he said, when he goes on that type of a rant, it feels like he feels the need a little bit to justify or something. And I, 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 maybe I'm reading into it too much because, you know, it's just a presser before the draft, but I did, I did read a little bit of that from his body language. He looked like a guy that's been unable to talk to anybody about this for three weeks and he let it unleash today. He was <laughs> unleashing. My, this was a vibe I got. The vibe I got was that Kyle Shanahan was still, was, is, Loves Mac Jones, as has been reported. And if he is going to get talked out of taking him, and if he does acquiesce to the scouting staff and, and John Lynch, he hasn't yet. That he is still making the case for Mac Jones. That's the way I if, felt. If I'm Kyle Shanahan, I, I'm not acquiescing on this. Okay. They, they made me take RG3. Well, I got him back by getting Kirk Cousins, but I was fired in three years. They made me take Johnny Manziel. I, I walked away from that job. Yeah. Uh, I would believe in Kirk Cousins, even when the Jimmy Garoppolo opportunity presented itself. Yeah, he ended up agreeing. Yeah, I think Jimmy Garoppolo was his second option. But I think it's been kind of been made clear to us that Kyle was more convinced that Kirk Cousins should have been the option and is the better option. And maybe he felt like he gave in a little bit to John Lynch and Adam Peters in the organization because Jimmy was such a bargain for just a second round pick. So I, I think it's high time. I don't want to. I don't want him riding the fence anymore. That's the thing. See, I think he's going to keep riding that fence. I think we've talked about it. I think he's going to acquiesce to Lynch in the scouting department and say, "Fine, you know what? If it's if it's me against the world, I'll, I'll back down. I value your guys' input, um, but just know that I disagree. And if this doesn't work out, it ain't me." See, because the thing is, and the thing I, I think it's it's difficult to talk about Kyle now because Niners fans are this is the most they've ever disliked Kyle. But just five months ago, Kyle was their favorite person. As I mean, Kyle has consistently been my favorite person on the 49ers, but he was consistently their favorite person on the 49ers. And everybody thought it was so cute when Kyle would be jumping on the sideline and throwing up his hands at Nick Mullins and throwing up his hands at Jimmy Garoppolo. And for me, always as a fan, I was like, why do you like this? Yeah. You like that the coach you're watching is th the consistently you like, throwing the quarterback and under he's the bus. Frustrated with the quarterback, and so I don't want to see that anymore. I want no. the guy that Kyle is going to talk about the way he talks about Kirk Cousins. I love Kirk. I think anybody would be lucky to have a quarterback like that. I want him to say no. that about the quarterback. And if that quarterback is Mac Jones, and I'm just an oblivious fan, and Mac Jones is really what most fans think he is. Well, then I'll be that oblivious fan, but at least I want to watch that visual output of Kyle being truly happy about the guy he has. Instead of saying, has Jimmy looked a lot better to you? Uh, you know, guys improve all the time. That's the nature of being in this league and all of that. I don't want to see that anymore. All right, let's hit some of these questions. They're coming in fast. Scott says, after Reuben Foster, why are Shanahan Lynch so quick to trust Saban and Alabama for a report on Jones? Well, we don't know, and I think the we Niners have probably done their own research here, but what do you think? Uh, well, first of all, the thing with Reuben Foster also is that I think the way they scouted him might have gotten cut short because they hired their regime so late in yes. Lynch and Shanahan, so they might not have been able to do the full character homework. And right. they had the story, right? John Lynch had the story about the church pastor and all of that and convincing them. I think they have gotten a lot better at this process. <laughs> and I'm not sure if they they go through this process talking to Nick Saban. Bastard. I think maybe they talk to Sark or whoever they're comfortable yes. with there. Yes. And that's how they will get their idea of who Mac Jones that is. That to but me is, is a I great think, question. It is a great question. I think the Sark thing is the most important connection. Not the Saban thing, but Sarkeesian because he's the one who uh, followed up Kyle Shanahan in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. So what he's running in Alabama is kind of Sarkeesian's version of Shanahan's offense anyway. So mm -hmm. Shanahan looks at it as like, well, you're trying to duplicate what I did. 
you did duplicate a lot of it. And look at how Mac Jones executes. I mean, if only I had a quarterback like that. So, yeah, I can see that. Uh, I'm sure they're friendly, too. Yeah, I would imagine. I would imagine. I'm sure they've been in in communication for years because Sarkeesian probably originally reached out to him and said, please help me run your offense. Yeah. (laughs) Please. But but I think – and I think that is the question, right? Because Mac Jones is probably the one guy that you do need to ensure that his background is clean. So you have to make sure that – yeah. All right. Nick says, out of all the questions you could have asked, Shani, uh, you choose Mike McGlinchey. Why? First of all, that was Vish's I asked question. For it. Yeah. Vish was like, hey, ask about McGlinchey. I was like, hey, fair enough. And the way I looked at it was, yeah, everyone asked about quarterbacks and everyone else did ask about quarterbacks. And that's what's on their mind. It's all speculation. They're not going to tell you who they're going to take. We'll know in three days. The question that Vish asked me to ask broke news. Now we know a fact. We knew we know information we didn't know a couple of hours ago because Vish asked me to ask it. I think it was a pretty good question. Sure, you got to ask about quarterbacks, but everyone else did that. I wanted a little curve. Vish wanted a little curveball. Yeah, Vish had good instincts on that. My thing is that everybody, I felt like everybody was going to ask basically the same question over and over again to Kyle Shanahan, rephrased in a different way. Drafting? And there were a lot of really great questions. Like, why do you yeah. like Mac Jones? Like, yeah. Why do you, come on. Come on. That's a little harsh. But, um, <laughs> He hasn't anyway, even drafted him yet. Yeah, Maybe? but yeah. anyway, anyway uh, fifth-year option deadline is what, May 3rd? Yeah. Mike and Glinchy, we have not heard uh, even an iota about whether they're going to do it, whether they're not. Nobody's given us an inkling on that. And I felt like this is usually the time you would like to find that out. And I think that's actually a very important thing. Are yeah. they going to take his fifth-year option? And they just told you, yes, they are. Yeah, it informs a lot of what they're going to do in the draft. I was interested. I mean, anyway. <laughs> 